Hi, welcome to the 3D Pendant. We have been talking about the five platonic solids lately. And you might wonder why. If you have a 3D pen, you will want to make 3D objects. So it helps to know how to build some basic shapes. And you might wonder, why are these five considered basic? Ever since Plato, his fellow geeks have been paying homage to these five basic shapes in one way or another. But if you ask me, it looks like a very unlikely group to belong together. How on earth are these related? Why are there just five? Aren't there other shapes in the world that would qualify for this club? You don't need to know any of this to be able to make them. But if you happen to be a STEM teacher tasked with explaining this to your students, you could use some help. And 3D pens are the best helpers to explain three-dimensional problems. So here's the deal. If we are looking for basics, let's start with a straight line. One line doesn't make a shape. Yes, it does. No, no curves allowed. They make things complicated. And we are looking for basic. We'll give curves their separate videos later. I said straight line. Okay, really, really straight line. One line doesn't do anything for us. If we have two, they either run parallel, if we stay in the Euclidean space, or they cross and then go their separate ways, which doesn't help us much in creating an enclosed space. However, once we add the third line, we are in business. We have a piece of fenced in real estate to work with. We have a triangle. There are too many different triangles to choose from. So if we are looking to narrow it down to the basics, Let's pick the one that has all the sides the same, to keep things simple. The equilateral triangle. And by the way, all the angles are the same too. Good candidate for basic. Now, taking this 2D triangle, let's try to go 3D. If we have just two of them, They fold up and we still only have a 2D shape. So like we needed three lines to make 2D shape, we'll need at least three 2D shapes to make a three-dimensional one. Here is a bunch of leftover space which we will skip. And here we go. We have a tetrahedron. On the bottom, it formed the same sized equilateral triangle. How convenient. This looks like a good basic rule to keep things simple. All the faces should be the same. Let's move on and see what we get out of four triangles. Now close this empty space. 
like so. And we have a 3D shape. Unfortunately, we just broke the rule we made as soon as we made it. What's with this square at the bottom? Perhaps if we added more of the same shaped faces onto the other side. Now it works. Eight faces all the same. We have an octahedron. Moving on. Let's start with five triangles. Close the gap. And we have a shape. Pentagonal pyramid. Looks cool. But that pentagon on the bottom is a problem. We will need to stick some more triangles to it somehow. To keep the faces all the same shape. So what if we just stuck the same mirror image shape on the bottom? Like we did for the octahedron. Could that work? It made a cool shape with ten faces. And they are all the same. So why is this one not included in the Platonic Solids Club? Well, the rule for admission is that not only all the faces have to be the same shape and size, but also all the angles. And not only the angles in the shapes, but also the angles at which the faces are attached to each other, which is called the dihedral angle. So let's measure this guy. These top triangles are joined at 138 degrees, nice open obtuse angle, but right here in the middle, this one is a pretty sharp acute angle, something like 68 degrees. Sorry, this shape doesn't work. So what if we attach the next row of triangles at the same 138 degree angle? And we get 10 triangles joined like this. And two of those will work, making a 20 faced shape. Icosahedron. Now we have a third shape that qualifies for the club. Okay, let's look further. Six triangles. Now, here is a surprise. Six fit together so perfectly, there is no gap to roll up. They perfectly tile the flat plane. No 3D shape happening here. I guess we are done with triangles. But we did get three shapes out of them, which is, as you'll see, way more than we can say for all the others. To look further, let's try a four-sided shape. Again, lots of choices. But we'll follow the rules and pick the one with all sides the same, the square. We know now we need at least three squares to lift a shape. There is the gap to roll up, and we have a lift off. We will need a few more squares to finish it up. 
So we'll do that trick with the mirror image halves again. And this time it worked. All the dihedral angles are the same 90 degrees and we have a cube. Moving on to four squares. Oh, here we have that no gap again. Square style a plane at four of them. So I guess we are done with squares. Moving on to five line shapes. Let's try all the same size sided pentagon. Starting with three of those again. Not much of a gap, but it will do to lift a 3D shape. We'll need more of those pentagons, but there are these three convenient corners where three of them will fit right in. And two of those halves will do the trick. We have a 12-sided shape, dodecahedron, which is a lot of fun to play with in all kinds of different ways. Now, there is no room for a fourth pentagon, and the pentagon doesn't even tile a plane like the others did. So we'll move straight on to the six-sided shapes, hexagons. And with three hexagons, we again have that no gap situation, just tiling a plane. Good for tiling a kitchen floor, but no 3D shapes to be had. Let's try a seven-sided shape. A heptagon. Now, there is not even room for three of these, unless I squish it. But then it would stop being a heptagon. And if I try octagon, it just gets worse. And so on down the line. So I guess we are done looking. There are only five. And why do we want to make those? Because if you can make those, you can make all the others that did not qualify for the exclusive Platonic Solids Club. And some of those shapes can be super helpful for all kinds of projects you might want to make, which will all follow a very similar techniques like the shapes we have just seen, including having to work at certain definite angles using your angle maker. Now, for some of these projects, you may prefer for your shapes to be solid. But how to make your solid solid is a serious upgrade. And that will have to be its own video, or even a series of them. So until then, here is how to make the angle tool that you will need for everything.